Um, this evening, as you know, we host the second Richard Gilder Distinguished Lecture with Professor James McPherson as fellow. This extraordinary series recognizes and honors an amazing friendship and partnership between two New York Historical Society trustees, Mr. Lewis Lerman and Mr. Richard Gil Gilder. I want to thank Lou Lerman once again for all the work that he's done in the service of American history. Thank you, Lou. And of course, I also want to thank Lou for making this series possible with a very generous grant. And I want to acknowledge, uh, as I do at every possible opportunity, the work of Dick Gilder, who's helped us, and of course, very, very many others as well, in every way imaginable to make American history come alive. Thank you so much, Dick. And um, now I'd just like to be a tiny bit self-indulgent and also recognize a great partner in many a venture, Dr. James Basker, who is Barnard and Columbia University professor and, of course, president of the Gilder Lerman Institute. Thanks, Jim. And finally, before I cede my place on the stage to Lou Lerman for his introduction, I just want to take a moment to ask you to please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Madam President, members of the New York Historical Society, friends of the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History, I begin by summarizing the constitution of the Richard Gilder Distinguished Visiting Fellowship. The Richard Gilder Distinguished Fellow shall have mastered American history and the founding principles of the Constitution of the United States as amended. He will have demonstrated the ability to inspire Americans to study their country's history, even while learning its flaws, and to embrace their rights and duties as citizens. Thus do we who love our country salute the study of American history and also its distinguished historians. The Gilder Fellowship originates in this educational, civic, and patriotic sentiment. It was Mr. Lincoln himself who reminded us in a eulogy of Senator Henry Clay that we love our country not only because it is our own country, but also because it is a free country. And it is a free country in virtue of the blood and the treasure offered up at the American founding, even the more so because of the astounding sacrifices made by millions of Americans during our Civil War. Black and white, North, and South. For Dick Gilder and for me, long ago as undergraduates at Yale University, we began our trek along these pathways of American history. And so we are deeply gratified to continue our pilgrimage here at the New York Historical Society. Tonight we have amongst us an American historian with a worldwide reputation, a scholar who has devoted a lifetime to the study of the Civil War, to the era of Mr. Lincoln, and to its influence on the story of our common country. The distinguished Gilder Fellow is not only a prize-winning scholar, but he is also a revered American teacher, having been long tenured at a faraway place, not too well known, I think called Princeton University. There, he has animated two generations of students telling one of the greatest stories ever told, the great American saga. There, he has chronicled the struggle which issued in the Emancipation Proclamation and the principles set forth in the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution of the United States. In a word, this celebrated historian became the teacher to a nation a teacher determined by his scholarship and his masterful prose to elucidate our history for Americans from all walks of life. 
For some of these very same reasons, the Distinguished Fellowship takes the name of Richard Gilder. For who among us has been more inspired by the study of American history? Who among us has done more to invest, to invest in the teaching of American history? In the creation of this fellowship, which bears his name, we honor a remarkable American. Perhaps, Dick, you might stand again that all may see you. And thank you. There is intended, of course, in the Gilder Fellowship even a larger purpose than to choose a distinguished professor to appear before us. And it is no less than the restoration of a robust and inclusive American citizenship, a silly culture grounded in the primacy of the teaching of American history and its founding principles as amended during and after the Civil War. I have only a moment to say here, in the presence of this distinguished audience, the deep feeling of gratitude to Dick Gilder, which arises in me as I now introduce the Gilder Fellow himself. We surely know that in this selection, as in all our judgments, we preside over the moral and intellectual formation of the future leaders of America. To this end, the New York Historical Society has meticulously chosen this Gilder Fellow, that by his appointment, we might set a most honorable precedent. Our visiting professor is, among his other distinctions, the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. He is the George Henry Davis Professor of History at Princeton University. He was the president of the American Historical Association in 2003. He is America's leading historian of the Civil War. He won the 1989 Pulitzer Prize for Battle Cry of Freedom, a New York Times bestseller, more than 600,000 copies sold. He won the 1998 Lincoln Prize. His Battle Cry of Freedom and other Civil War publications paved the way for the success of the films Glory and Gettysburg and the amazing PBS television documentary of the Civil War. A way back almost 20 years ago, Hugh Brogan in the New York Times Book Review summarized the sentiment with which this Gilder Fellows masterpiece, Battle Cry of Freedom, was greeted by students of American history the world over. I quote Mr. Brogan, this is the best one volume treatment of any subject I have ever come across. It may actually be the best ever published. It is comprehensive and succinct, scholarly without being pedantic, eloquent but unrhetorical. I was swept away, feeling as if I had never heard the saga before. While there is so much more to know of this peerless historian, I cannot help but remark his personal virtues, his modesty, his generosity, his devotion to his every student. May I present to you the George Henry Davis Professor of History at Princeton, James M. McPherson. Well, thanks so much, Lou, and thanks to all of you for your warm welcome this evening. Uh, I'm really impressed by the way in which Lou has uh, proved himself a master of understatement this evening. <laughs> <laughs> On September 7th, 1862, Major General George B. McClellan wrote to his wife exultantly that, my enemies are crushed, silent, and disarmed. What on earth did he mean? Had he won a great battle against the Army of Northern Virginia that has somehow escaped the attention of historians? This was far from the only time that McClellan referred to titanic struggles with